and he was not wealthy, and in fact he was orphaned as a young baby, and he ended up having to work even as a child, and he was hired out to a wise woman named Keridwen, and Keridwen had a son, and she wanted this son to become a great bard and genius, and so she devised a potion of inspiration which she put into her pauldron and she knew that she had to concentrate this potion of inspiration down to a few drops and so she had to boil all the water off and let this concentrate and concentrate and reduce and reduce and for that she needed someone to stir the cauldron and she hired this little boy named Guyenbach and Guyenbach would stir the cauldron and stir the cauldron to prevent this liquid from boiling over. And he did his job very well until quite near the end, when it was almost ready. One drop boiled over the cauldron and it landed on Guyenbach's hand. And it burned him. And as you do when he got burned by this drop of liquid, he put his hand to his mouth. And immediately he became a great bard and a great genius. And the first thing that he realized was that this potion had not been intended for him. It was intended for Keridwan's son. And when she found out that he had drunk it, that he had put it in his mouth and become a great genius, she would be very angry and that she would try to get those ingredients back from him. And the only way to do that was to kill him. And so he knew that she was going to pursue him and he saw her arriving to look and see what was happening. So he quickly turned himself into a hare to escape. But she turned herself into a greyhound and she chased him. And so he turned himself into a little lark to fly away, but she turned into a hawk and she chased him. And so he saw the river coming up and he turned himself into a fish and fell into the river and began swimming. But she turned into an otter and she chased him. And she kept turning into whatever it was that could chase whatever it was that he turned into. And they went through many transformations this way as he fled and she pursued. And eventually he saw a barn and in that barn was a giant heap of grain. And he said, well, if I transform myself into one grain and I fall into that pile, there's no way she would find me. And so that was what he tried. But she turned herself into a giant fat chicken and she ate every single grain. And so she ate Guyen But the joke was on her because nine months later she gave birth to a beautiful baby that was the reincarnation of Guyen and it was so beautiful that she couldn't bring herself to kill the baby, but she also was afraid of what it might do to her. So she put the baby into a leather bag and she threw it into the sea. And the baby floated around in this bag until a fisherman caught the bag. And the fisherman thought this was wondrous bag with a squirming thing inside. And he brought it to the Prince Elfin, who was the son of Gwethno Garanhir. And Elfin decided to open the bag and see what was in there and he opened it and a young boy stepped out and the boy had a shining face that was so beautiful that Gwavno called the boy Taliesin which means shining brow and Taliesin grew up to be the greatest bard and the greatest genius of his or any age and I think the moral of that story is that sometimes we have to go through changes and transformations, and we have to be pursued by adversity. We have to go through troubles and trials in order to become our best selves. And that is part of the story of Taliesin. And another thing about Taliesin is whenever he made reference to this early life of his, which he did in his poetry, one of the things he talked about was spending time not just as different animals, but also as elements. And so he would say, for example, I have been a wind in the air. I have been a flame of a lantern. I have been a drop in a shower of rain. I have been both the wave and the shore, the river and the bank. And so he referred to himself as having been earth and air and fire and water. And those four elements are also very important to us here at the farm. And they're embodied in our maypole and our stream. And so during these ceremonies, every year we bless the maypole and the stream. And our green man and King Michael are going to help us to do that now.